Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of This Studio. My name is Adam. And today we're going to be talking about the cheapest marimba in the world. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Zero Gravity Percussion, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Mallet Lab, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Austin Bench, and Scott Raider. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Marimbology. Thank you so much for joining the studio artist team. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. I hope you've been well. And yes, we have yet another marimba review you might remember a few months back there were four marimbas in the studio there was my izzy there was the wave there was the mode marimba and there was this mysterious fourth marimba that some people spotted in the background of the shots saying that it was made of paduk what could it be well it's here today and it's the cheapest marimba in the world but before we get into this marimba i have to of course thank the people who sent it which was of course nick parnell percussion academy this video is not sponsored by nick parnell percussion academy at all but they did send over this marimba and basically nick parnell percussion academy is an academy for young students to learn things like marimba and vibraphone and percussion in adelaide south australia and for any students who would like to hire a marimba instead of buying one especially if it's like their first time playing nick parnell percussion academy hires these exact marimbas to any students that are interested for a low price. I just think this is a really cool idea. So if you're interested, the link is in the description below. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, the cheapest marimba in the world. Yes, I've used that phrase about 10 times now and it's also in the video title. Mm, clickbait. But actually the way I found that out was if you go to Steve Weiss Music right now and if you search for marimbas and you sort it from low to high in terms of price, this is the fourth cheapest marimba. But the three cheaper marimbas are actually tabletop marimbas. They don't have a frame, they don't have resonators, they just have a box and they use a keyboard stand. So I don't really consider those to be real marimbas. So QED, ergo, this is the cheapest marimba in the world. And if you were watching the B-roll of the Keen Eye, you would have noticed that this marimba is made by Adams. And Adams is one of the largest percussion companies in the world. So it really surprised me when I found out that Adams had a model lineup called the Solist series. Solist, not Soloist, which is like their economy lineup. And there are different models ranging from a four and a third octave model that you can actually use for most repertoire, all the way to this tiny three octave model called Junior Solist. 30. So yes, 30 stands for three octaves, which is pretty much the main reason why this instrument is so cheap because it's so small. And how cheap is it you ask? Well, it comes in at the very, very affordable entry level price of 1700 US dollars. So to put it into perspective, this marimba costs 15% of how much I paid for my five octave marimba. Just 15% of that gets you a marimba like this. And so I guess the main question we're gonna be asking on this episode is, should everyone get one of these then? Should we all save money and buy something like this instead of buying a fully fledged concert marimba? Hmm. Well, to answer those questions, we're gonna go through everything to do with this marimba, including the setup, including the features, including anything else you would wanna know about it, and also a sound test, all in one video this time. Let's start off with the installation process. So assembling and disassembling this instrument is very, very easy, purely because it's so small. Like even if they made it really complicated, at the end of the day, it's so small that one person can do it with one hand. Starting off with the parts, first we have the Voyager frame parts. There are two center tubes which join in the middle, there are four rails, and there are two sets of resonators, and finally two sets of Paduk bars. Yes, this marimba is made of Paduk, of course. At this price point, you are not gonna be expecting rosewood. Rosewood is very expensive. But the bright side of Paduk, haha, <laughs> bright side, is that Paduk is much more hard wearing than rosewood. It doesn't crack as easily because the bars are just a lot thicker and the wood is a lot harder and it's a lot brighter in terms of sound. So it's really good for developing students because then you can hear what you're playing very clearly. But anyway, back to the assembly process. Now, Nick Parnell Percussion Academy has been very kind. They've put stickers and letters on all of the parts so we know where to put 
what? So starting off with the wheel legs, so you put the wheels into the joints, you join the struts together, and then that's one side done. You do the same thing for the other side, and then you join both of the sides together using the center tubes. So it's very simple. I think anyone who knows how to build anything would know how to build this. Even someone as slow as myself can build this by myself. So once you have the frame set up, then obviously you get the resonators and they just slot in, very simple. They have the slit design, so it's very easy. They also have two sets of slots for humidity purposes. And then you have the rails, which are kind of like childproof because they are so stiff. But once you put them in, they are rock solid, like super, super solid. So that's nice. And then finally, you mount the bars on, which couldn't be any easier because when you only have three octaves, you literally only need to put your hands like this far apart. Once you've mounted the bars on, your marimba is complete. Like it couldn't be any easier than that. However, one of the things I noticed about the Voyager frame system, which is this hourglass figure thing that is on the sides, this frame system is used on pretty much every model of Adam's marimba, is that there are a lot of twisty knobs. There's about nine or 10 knobs per side. So if you forget to turn just one of them, that could be the end of your marimba. Fortunately, this one is really small, so it wouldn't matter. But if you had a five octave marimba and just one knob was loose, it's gone. So I've always thought if Adams could simplify the Voyager frame and not have so many knobs, or maybe use a different kind of fastening system, like, I don't know, a clasp or something. Anyway, once this marimba is put together, it's pretty rigid, like it's pretty stiff. It doesn't feel like it's going to break or fall apart in any way. I like it, I think it's very robust. Now let's talk about some of the main features. So one of the things you'll notice about this marimba, starting from the bottom, is that all four wheels have brakes. Now, I find that to be very important because a lot of cheaper marimbas only have brakes on one side or they have them on opposing sides, but not all four wheels. I really like that these brakes have a really big surface area and are really easy to kick into place and they give a very satisfying click when you press it. Moving up from that, you'll notice the next good feature of this marimba, which is of course, the height adjustment. So the height adjustment is one of those crank systems and this is one of Adam's greatest inventions is the Voyager height adjustment system because I think it's one of the best crank systems out there in the sense that it gives you some numbers to look at so you know how high the instrument is. You have no idea how many marimbas are on the market right now that don't have any height indications. Like, what is that? <laughs> now, as you can see, the marimba at its lowest height is very, very low. Obviously, the marimba is called Junior, so it's designed for young kids, which is good because if your kids are like this short, they'll be able to play this marimba pretty much perfectly. Fortunately, this marimba can also go very, very high. This is called setting number zero, and I believe it goes all the way up to setting number nine. So, so all I have to do is unlatch the latch on the left-hand side. I know a lot of people forget to do this first before increasing it. And then I just have to crank the thing up. So I'm going to increase both ends of the marimba. I'm gonna screw it back. And now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Well, look at this. <laughs> Looks like a monster truck. One thing I hate about raising it on this side is that your hand bangs against the resonator. <laughs> uh, um. And of course, you guys know that I like gas lifts, but that's not to say that gas lifts are objectively better than crank systems because some people like that feeling of cranking up the marimba so they know exactly where it's sitting, each to their own. Next thing this marimba has is resonators. And you'll notice that most cheaper marimbas, like the ones we set on Steve Weiss, are tabletop marimbas and they will not have resonators. So you won't get that very full sound. But on this marimba, it actually rings for quite a long time. I'm very impressed. Now covering the marimba is this sort of fake vinyl material. Now, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like the same material they use on car dashboards. It's coated all over everything. And of course, this is to save money because at this price point, you're not gonna get nice, you know, wood panels, mahogany, aluminium. You're not gonna get any of those fancy materials. So yeah, it's a very child safe design. It's a very bomb proof design in general, which means if you put this in a school or if you put this in an environment where it's just gonna get absolutely trashed, it's going to be fine. Also, this marimba is made in Holland. If you look at the back, there is a plaque proudly saying, made in Thorn, Holland. It's nice to know that you're playing something that is of European origin. And finally, this marimba comes with its very own cover, which is actually a pretty decent cover. It's like soft on the inside and relatively hard wearing on the outside. And it even has the Adams logo on the top. You will see here it says Junior 30. So 
very nice because a lot of cheaper rimmers don't have covers. They just don't. And finally, we're going to get into the sound test where we'll hear what this instrument sounds like properly. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Here is the sound test. I'm going to try and play a few different tunes on this as well as the normal mallet sound test. I'm going to use the same mallets throughout, which are the Keiko Kotoku series. I'm going with a very interesting setup, 5544. Here's the sound test. So guys, what did you think of the sound? Let me know in the comments down below. I personally think for an instrument that's three octave, is made of Paduke and is $1,700, this instrument has quite a lot of warmth and resonance and sound. A lot of fundamental comes out when you hit the bars. The only thing I will say is of course the tuning is a bit off, uh, both in terms of resonance and also in terms of pitch. Definitely the low C here sounds a little bit whack to me. <laughs> But this is a $1,700 instrument, let's not forget that. But yeah, it really surprised me just how much sound you could get out of these little tubes because normally even some four and a third octave instruments don't get that much resonance, especially on a Paduk instrument. So yeah, that's all we have time for today. So thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this marimba or anything you want to see on the show or anything you're looking forward to in the next couple of months. We still have some spots left for Marimba Fest, even though it is past the early bird registration date. We do have a very good family of participants so far. So if you'd like to join this year's participants, you can head to our website marimbafest.com. The festival is in July. It's going to be really fun. So if you have some time and you'd like to have an experience that's not in America, you can come to Australia. And as always, we're going to be producing more content on this show and I am going to be releasing a few new pieces very soon, including my new duo Flying Colors, as well as a new solo coming very, very, very soon. So make sure you hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads. Thanks so much for watching this week's episode and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.